very few headless machines known, I would think. And to have it, that much of it left, which is basically all of it, except for a few knobs and knockers. But it's got that very nice wrench style safety shutter centrifuge. All working. Oh, sorry. That's okay. And this unusual shutter with a perforated section. You can probably barely see, there we are. Perforated section and a solid section. Kind of interesting. There are all sorts of attempts to make semi opaque or s slightly translucent parts to the, the um, non flick blades of the shutters. None of them really took off because I don't think they were that different to not having one. But um, very interesting to see. Still early days where they're trying all sorts. Assuming that's original or at least added by a showman who's using this machine at some point. Uh, Nick pointed out this really unusual angled view so that the guy turning the handle could also see the arc lamp condition at any point. Um, now why didn't that take off? Because that's really a good idea. Except later when you had motorised machines, you didn't have to keep turning the handle, you could just step away and look straight through. I guess maybe that's why. Uh, we don't see that on later machines, or indeed on any other machines that I know about. And the lantern lens arrangement still there. Slide. So what can I say? Very jealous. Should we open it? Yeah, we're yeah. going to have a look at the... Yeah, let's have a look inside, Lester. And this is uh, something very surprising and unusual. How about that? Over and under. Get inside the bonnet. See what's going on in here. Regional art This is the stuff. And the condenser, of course. So... Lots of uh, access, which is really so much better than the old thing where you had to pull everything out and try and work with it and then push it all back in again through the back. So sensible. With a little hinge there to hold up the top. Have you ever seen one of those, Lester? No, never. No. There you go. the only one. It could be, couldn't it? Yes. Yeah. May have been made specially to help with design by the lantern manufacturer. These lanterns were almost certainly made by specialists and just bought in, but no doubt you could ask them to do something like that if you, if you wanted to. First of all, I have to introduce this second session of the <laughs> South East of England Bioscopists. And we have with us today an extra member who's going to introduce himself. Jeremy Brooker. Magic Lantern Society. Jeremy Brooker, Magic Lantern Society. Do you, do you own a 35mm hand crank projector? No, nothing more than Ooh, that. Ooh, you want one? Well, in, in that case, you can only be an associate member. You soon will of the be. East, of the South East <laughs> Bioscopist, I'm afraid. But, that, you know. Let me go in my garage. Really. <laughs> You've been made an offer now. Okay. But So, let, no, Nick, tell us about this interesting shutter that you just well, brought this, out. This is all the bits and pieces that came with... Uh, 1912 Annaman projector, and yep. this is a very unusual front shutter, yes, which has a patent date of 1916 mm. and is one of the attempts to cut down flicker while keeping as much light going onto the screen as possible. So it has these color panels to let light through, it has a a very complex adjustable yeah. set of um, of slots here. So you can vary the width of the slots. And it has a mica panel, and I think it originally it would have had two mica panels with with um, more colour, probably um, nitrate film in the middle. Yeah. Um, rather like these. Yeah. So it's a very so, complicated. So, yeah. So you've got these two plus the slots. Yeah. So many. Um, lots of adjustments because these yeah. are. Both sides um, yep. move, 
Oh, right, yeah. So That's you, quite you can yeah, really yeah. vary. Yeah, to very wide to very narrow. The amount of opening that you can have there is uh, very yeah. adjustable. My bridge did something yeah, similar on the Supraxiscope. He had an adjustable... But 1916 yeah. is... Late. Because the machine it came with has limelight... Yes. ...rather than carbon uh, yeah. yeah. I think that this was probably an attempt to get as much light yeah. on the screen from limelight... Yeah, a last-ditch attempt. ...as possible, a last-ditch attempt to keep yeah. limelight going. Yeah. Because permanent cinemas with carbon arcs were able to project so much brighter, bigger yeah. pictures... Sure. ...that this was, I think, sold to a touring showman who was desperately trying to, trying to keep up. Yeah. And it's interesting how many of the early cinemas have the, the word electric in the title, like electric palace, electric theatre. Yeah, yeah. And I think what they were doing was emphasising that they had State this of the art. big, bright picture, yeah. um, which, which the travelling showman just couldn't compete with. And it's interesting, there are comments at the time of prints, film prints being produced for balanced for the uh, carbon arc projection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the density of the print. Okay, in all sorts yeah. of different ways, I yeah. think the travelling showmen were getting frozen out of the market. Um, but there is also there's a, a three-bladed shutter here, which is quite simply made. Um, like all three-bladed shutters, it has one that's slightly bigger than the others, and this is to cover the, yeah, yeah. This is to the, cover pull, the down. pull down. Yeah. And it's interesting, somebody has scratched a cross uh, so you remember which on, one. on yeah. the one that's to cover the pull down. So when you set it up, it's this one that has the yeah. same function as the single blade on the older projectors, and then these just interrupt the light yeah. so that it gives you three flashes. Yeah. Um, per, we used to call these the non-flick blades because non it reduced the flicker. Yes. Yeah. They did. They did sometimes refer to these as flicker fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like a fan on the front it is, of the isn't machine. It? Yeah. And and you do have to have a cross because you could easily get that wrong. With some other designs, these are much narrower. Like with the Pappy yeah. Baby. Remember that? Mm -hmm. It's very narrow. But um, uh, but that's going to give you. It's interesting because apparently. Prashinsky, Kazimir Prashinsky. Yeah. He was the first to design a pull down that had the same equal shutter. Oh, really? And consequently, the flicker disappeared completely. Well, it's interesting with this one. I mean, you, you're getting a, you're getting a, you're approaching fifty percent of the light. Yes. Not reaching the screen. Yes. Which um, is why, when you go to the cinema in those days, you should ask for half your money back. Because <laughs> you're watching the blank screen. Of them. <laughs> it gives you two problems. One of them is the amount of light reaching the screen is yep. considerably reduced. Yeah, and did. then you've also got a lot of heat, uh, yeah. because you're blocking, uh, you're blocking the heat as well. So, uh, good point. I mean, um, the thing about the light is, it's a compromise. Do you want an, a brighter picture or a flicker-free picture? Yeah. You, you know, that's that's basically, and that's well, that, that's that's, that's the, where the purpose of this. This, yeah. this tries to offer you both, doesn't yeah, yeah, it? Yeah, it, it tries, does, to, tries to yeah. flick a free, yeah. bright picture, and yeah. somebody in desperation bought that in 1916, and there yeah. are so few surviving. I think there are only two of those I've ever seen. Yeah, right. Um, I've never seen is, one. Other than that, that's the yeah. most complete. Yeah. Um, I don't think it was used very long. No. So. Oh well, that's terrific. Thank you for that, Nick. Yeah, it's like a spiritual Luke's feeding. just arrived. We have an I didn't introduce Lester because he's a regular. Yes, <laughs> our Smith. second meeting. And and Luke, another associate member. I'm he, an observer. He doesn't. Luke doesn't own a hand crank 35 mm projector. I know. I don't know how that can be. Is that possible? But apparently it is. And you're just still speaking to me. It's very good. Well, you're an associate member. Associate. <laughs> Jeremy's, say, yeah. Jeremy's an associate yeah. member. I'm an honorary associate. I'm an honorary yes. associate member of good standing. Yes. <laughs> so this came from the same machine, the cam. Yeah. Oh no, it's not the no, cam. No, the, this um, came from an Anaman. An Anaman, 1913 Anaman. About 1912, yeah. 12, yeah. But this, and this demonstrates yeah. why you usually have brass slide carriers yeah, um, in cinematograph lanterns, because this has sat <laughs> being projected through and has just charred away yeah. all, all around. So the amount of yeah. heat it was huge. coming it was with the light very hot. Yeah. Is, is very significant.
an um, interesting this has survived because you can imagine that someone might have thought oh we'll try the other way or replace the burnt part but it survived in, yeah, in its it, damage it was on the machine when I got it so yeah. Uh, yeah. interesting again it all it's all little bits of information that give you more of an insight into how people use these things and the problems that they came up against that we forget because if we're running an old projector we tend to put a modern light source in it yes, yeah. and most of the problems for the projection were about the old old type light sources which were very very yes, bright getting rid of the heat, the heat was was in, yeah. it's something we don't tend to think of with with cinema we think of the light we think of the image yeah we think of the way that the pull down system um but we don't think of a huge amount of heat which is being generated by the lamp house by the lamp yeah and has to be got rid of somehow Absolutely. Um, and if you if by law you put the projectionist and the, the projector into a little box it's going to get pretty <laughs> You're hot. Going to get a lot well, of it heat. did. Even when I started started in the business fifty years ago, the bo boxes were not big. The, I mean, not they're not literary boxes, but it was still called the box. And you had two carbon art projectors working alternately. Yeah. And on a, in a July on a July day, when pigeons had made little nests in your extract fan <laughs> pipes, <laughs> uh, it could oh. get pretty hot. Yeah, yeah. If you look at photographs of uh, cinemas before the nineteen twenties. The usual pattern is you go in at the front yeah. door, the screen is at the far end, yeah. the projection box is above the front door. Right. And if you look at the photographs, the windows are almost always open yeah. in the projection the only box. Ventilation because they've got to get rid of got to get rid of the heat. And the fumes. And the fumes. The yeah. Yeah. I was looking through the viewfinder here and that looks like a polytechnic lantern you've got over there. I just feel like <laughs> we'll get it fired up later. We'll get it I'll get a fire started with some nitrate. <laughs> <laughs> it is threaded there. We just need a <clears throat> another screw. Another screw. So we, I said that in the first place. It's just a screw missing. Leslie said it was an oil hole. <laughs> yeah, well, there's, there's, a, there's a hole the other side. You think? That's an oil hole. So that's the oil no, hole. You're two, both two right. screws. Well, that's not threaded, that one. Hello, That's right? for those old-fashioned unthreaded screws. <laughs> they were once popular. <laughs> well, they were for they, Mr. Hepworth. Once so popular. <laughs> so ah, you threaded. need a Hepworth unthreaded screw. <laughs> We've got no so, take up, and I've got I've gone through all that trouble of getting the film all laced up. And that there. I've bought three kilowatt of film done with me. list has got, yeah, we've got a whole cinema show. Oh, for heaven's sake. Look, we've got no take up. I like this. So what if I charge you less for your lunch? Fair enough. Okay. So we'll go with the pressure method. We'll go with. Oh, I want to get that on there, and it won't go. Well, I got it off. Yeah. Did, didn't oh. we? Did you? Yeah, I, is that I important? pulled it off. It's a good fit. It fits. Is this a comedy or a farce? Have we made the distinction? The tragedy. <laughs> the bleeding tragedy, mate. Stop and get restless in the audience. <laughs> well, they went home a long time ago. Let's try an alternative way. Oh, should I get the big hammer? <laughs> Some natural thinking going on here from Lester. What's the alternative, Lester? Uh, get the video machine out. DVD. Out. Yeah. I'm trying to like, get my bike together again. Oh, I'm trying to... No, it doesn't seem to work very well. Um, <coughs> no, you're lifting that up. Yeah, I'm wiggling it around. I could take this out and we can try that one. Yeah, you need another old fashioned spanner. They're thumping the seats downstairs. <sighs> Sell them another ice cream. Yes. I'd like one. Like should we leave, should we use the lantern lens to something? Um, oh. The original 1913 phone there. <coughs> um, and Lester says he's fixed it. This yeah, yeah, yeah. this tension does matter. Oh, I know. Who do? <laughs> Look, that's loose and that's tighter. Do we want it tighter? So you don't need the spongy then. It's not a very period looking wrench you got there. This one. <laughs> this is a modern, old Royce or went modern reproduction. That's it. 
Good. Now there's now there's, there's one like thing that. missing. Yeah. Yeah. What's missing? Moving pictures. Oh, that. <laughs> that bit. The thing with the screw. The collar. <coughs> so, if we put that into compression, and then we tighten this up. Can I push? Uh, I want another screwdriver that's going to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I tighten that up. Yeah. Do it again. What is moving there? Oh, nothing. It's just spinning on the... I think we ought to find another screw. It's just spinning on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to tighten that up anymore. Yes. I'm already worried about it. Just bring, bring the, oh, bring thought... the mat with you, Lester. The mat. Right. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Right. Okay. Take up in a basket so because the take we're, up we're doesn't done. work. Oh, is that right? one foot. Yes. It's got right. Another foot. Are we all right? Uh, you check. Okay. okay. I don't want to be in position. Seriously, what would you do? Yeah, and, uh, and pretty fast because that will make the safety shutter go up and then you'll be in business. <laughs> so just go, go. That's good. Let's just got to get in focus now. That's good. I'm sorry, I'm doing the same. Look at the gold. Not on the screen. It's quite, quite a lot going on down here. I'd rather be a manager. How's the, um, how's, the, how's the shutter doing? Is it, um, it's not bad. I think, I think that's not far off, actually. Great! Yeah, you've got to rack up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Shutter's down. Safety shutter automatically fell down, you notice. <laughs> Mr. Fire <laughs> Officer. <laughs> What's happening inside? Only halfway through. Yeah. Does I it get eaten? <laughs> Almost. We certain. never know. We're just look it up on IMDB. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got to get that phone. We can watch the rest of it. Have we had enough? It's not. A bit faster, please. Shall we let the sound out? Oh, damn. Day in Wales. Norden, do you know Norden? Yeah. Yeah. Got no title. No title. No. Go for it, go fast. Oh, yeah. Really?
We just made it. It's shot to bell, isn't it? Do you want to stop for a sec? Can I just um That's better. Now we've got the shutter much better. Less ghostly. We go a bit quicker. Yeah, I think that's going to be pale ale. Ooh, a lot of pain on Whoa! Voila! Oh. Another yeah. broken bit. Can you have a break? Put some slides on. Yeah. <laughs> you can do if you like. No. Safety yeah. shutter. Yeah. Down, okay. Shut the light off. A bit more threading there for you, Steve. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. Okay. Ready? Okay, let's not fix it. Come see it. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> <laughs>